When we started, when I came, we had graduation speakers who we would, we'd pay a lot of money to. I'm kind of cheap. So we don't pay them anything anymore. Now, what I really wanted to do was something very different. I wanted to, you to be able to see someone who had graduated from Pan Am, and you could see what is possible, and you could know that you could be that person on that stage at this time. It is my distinct honor now to introduce our speaker for today. He's a distinguished Rio Grande Valley attorney, and he's a proud graduate of Pan Am, Mr. Jesse Gonzalez. Oh, I got lots more words, stay down. He graduated in 1992 from Pan Am with a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies. And do you know what he did? He went up to La Jolla and began teaching there. Okay? Because he had an overarching goal, and he still has that same goal today, and that was to help underrepresented people in the Rio Grande Valley. He came back, and he got a master's degree in educational administration. A bunch of you today will receive that degree. And before leaving the teaching profession, he got another call, call to service. You see, Jesse, like some of you, had spent much of his life and his childhood going north to Minnesota to pick and work those farms. And he saw how people were treated, how unfairly, especially by corporations and by others. He saw what he calls large company injustices. And he decided that he needed to change that because people didn't know what their rights were and there weren't attorneys to represent him. So he left La Jolla and went to St. Mary's and got his law degree. And then he interned with federal judge Edward C. Prado in San Antonio, but he didn't stop his education. He went to the University of Innsbruck in Austria. Yes, you can go to Austria and study. He also went to Oxford. Yes, a student from Pan Am can get into the mighty Oxford in England and study there. And then he came back and he decided he's going to start a new career with commercials on television. <laughs> and you've seen him going back and forth, but he always says, that he's a proud graduate of Pan Am, and he is out there trying to help others by representing them and being there for them every day. It is an honor to consider him a friend and to have him here with us today. Graduates, this can be you. This can be you. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Thank you, all of you. It's an honor to be here today. And I applaud and congratulate all of you for this great achievement. When I was told that I was going to give this commencement speech, obviously I was very nervous because I had never done one of these before. And so in doing some research, I came across an article that said that President Clinton, former President Clinton, remembered what his commencement speaker had said 45 years ago at his graduation. So I said, wow, that must have been a powerful message. Let me look that speech up and maybe I'll get an idea and, and share that with the graduates here today. So I looked it up and here's what I found. The graduation ceremony was outdoors. And just when the speaker was about to take the podium to speak, a thunderstorm started moving in. Thunder started, you know, doing its thing. The lightning, it was about to rain. The speaker saw the students shivering, Bill Clinton being one of them. And he said, it appears like we're all about to drown and die, 
So I'm going to leave now. If you want to hear my speech, email me. Bye. <laughs> so I'm like, that didn't do me any help. <laughs> so with that, let me just say that I basically am very happy to be here indoors. The weather's not going to be a factor, obviously. And I just wanted to share some background with you. And some of it, you know, uh, Dr. Nelson has already shared with you. But yes, I, I grew up in the valley. I grew up in the valley all my life. I was born in McAllen, lived in Mission for 26 years, graduated from Mission High School, came to Pan Am in 1986, and I would commute every day from Mission to Pan Am. And I did that uh, until I got my degree. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you about that was that you know, my biggest struggle wasn't so much the studying and, and, and doing the things that I needed to do past my classes, but rather did I have enough money for gas to get to Edinburgh for mission? Uh, there were many days that I didn't have any money to buy food. And so we had friends that sometimes would pitch in for, you know, just a burrito that three of us or four of us would share. And there were many times that um, my car would break down, I'd run out of gas, but I never stopped going to Pan Am. I never allowed that to become an obstacle to graduating. And, you know, Randy Posh put a, a famous professor, he um, published a book some time back and, and he died of cancer. And before he died, he wrote a book called The Last Lecture. And in his book, he talked about how obstacles are there in the form of brick walls for a lot of us. And, and those brick walls are there for other people, not for those that want something bad enough. And clearly, I applaud all of you for being here today and accomplishing what you did, because whatever obstacles you had were not too big for you to overcome to accomplish what you did. When I was three or four years old, my family and I started migrating to, to uh, Oregon. And what we did there was pick strawberries and any kind of fruit in the state of Oregon. After that, we started migrating to Minnesota, and our job there was to hoe sugar beets. And that brings me to one of my stories that I want to share with you because it's a valuable lesson that I learned from being a migrant farm worker. Working in the fields was about how many acres you covered in a day because they paid us by the acre. At the time, it was $22 an acre. And nine rows typically made an acre. And so my parents, I recall telling me, son, if you want to make money in the future, you've got to get married young, and you've got to have as many kids as possible. <laughs> you have nine kids, you'll have an acre on the way going, you know, that way, on the way back, that's two acres, that's $44 a round trip, you'll make lots of money, you've got to hurry up, get married, and have kids. I said, wow, 10 kids, I'm going to go crazy, I'm going to die. There's got to be a better way to make money than this. That was an important message for me because luckily they didn't say, well, stop going to school, let's work in the fields full time. They also believed in education. And I chose their other advice, which was get educated. And that's an important message because ultimately in life, you're going to have people that love you, care about you, and, and mean well. And they want the best for you. But they're, they're giving you advice based on their experience. Ultimately, while they may mean well, it may be limiting for you. This is your degree. This is your life. Follow your heart. Follow your passion. And be careful with some of the advice that people will give you because it may limit your potential. When I was also um, here at Pan Am, uh, about 19 years old, we used to have graduation at a gym before the advent of computers and all the uh, uh, technology now that we can use. We had to physically be there. And I was 19 years old, and I remember going to registration, and I really had no clue what I was going to major in. I just knew that I wanted to get a degree. And I came across a counselor who was a career guidance counselor. And I walked up to her and I said, listen, I, I need some guidance here. I, I don't know what to do. I know I want a degree, but I just, I, I don't know. I need some direction here. 
She says, well, let me look at your transcript. She looked at my transcript, looked at my grades. She's like, well, looks like you never made the dean's list your previous year or so. And um, based on your grades, I'm not sure you really uh, care what you're doing here. So look, let me give you some advice. Just take the easy way out, get your degree, and get out of here. And I said, well, what do you suggest I do? She said, well, your minor, if you minor in English, you already have to take 12 hours of English courses. You take two more classes, you're done with your minor. That's one way to get things done quicker. So I didn't know any better. I said, okay, that sounds like a good plan to me. What I wasn't counting on was this. I enrolled in a class on my path of taking the easy way out with Dr. Hamilton, who I don't know if he's here in the audience today or not. But Dr. Hamilton taught a class called the Romantic Period and the Victorian Period, and he focused on English literature. And so I decided to take those courses. And ultimately, what ended up happening when I took the quote-unquote easy way out, I found a passion and love for literature that I didn't know I had. But most importantly, Dr. Hamilton did something that no other professor or teacher had ever done since I had been a student in kindergarten. I, done, I did poorly in one of his exams, and on the top of, his, top of the exam he wrote, Jesse, I know you can do better than this. That was the first time anyone had ever said, hey, I believe in you, you can do better. As a result of him giving me that advice and believing in me, I ended up taking 33 hours of English. I ended up teaching English at La Jolla. And not only that, but I went back to Pan Am and I audited courses and sat in in order so that I could do my job better as a teacher. So taking the 18 hours of English to get out of there as quickly as possible turned out to more like 40 some odd hours of English. But here's the message that's important about that. When I went to law school, what do you think helped me the most getting through law school and passing the bar? It was all the English courses I took at Pan Am that prepared me for all those difficult classes that I took in law school. And one of the things that, call it poetic justice, but I never planned on going to Oxford University, but when I did, what do you know, all the professors that I had read about, and I had read their works in Edinburgh, Texas, here at Pan Am, uh, being in Oxford, that's where a lot of them lived. Being in England, I was able to go to a lot of the places where they were inspired and wrote a lot of their poems, their short stories, or their novels. And it was funny because a lot of the students that were there with me to learn law were taking literature tours with me because they wanted to know about the different things that I knew about these different poets and authors from England. Um, so that was a real treat. But the larger message about that is this. Doing what I did, taking those English courses, I did that primarily because I wanted to help my students become better students. I wanted to better serve them. And in the end, that allowed me to be better prepared later in the future when I went to law school and later as a lawyer. So remember that. Always, number one, do things to help others because in the end, it's something that ultimately will benefit society, will benefit your community, and ultimately you will get a reward from it as well. But here's the other message. Remember that counselor that said, I don't believe in you, or, or rather, take the easy way out? Uh, Professor Hamilton said, no, I believe in you. There's ultimately always gonna be people that are gonna say, you can't do it. You don't have what it takes, or you're not smart enough, whatever. But there's always gonna be people as well that are gonna believe in you. In fact, I'm looking around here and I see a lot of people here that believe in you. And all of you have at least that one person that believes in you. Choose to believe in those, obviously, that believe in, in, you, in you, who you are. And that'll take you places. 
The other thing I want to tell you is that uh, Dr. Nelson mentioned about me being on TV. And he's right. Most of you know me as the lawyer with the transformer and the Hummer and, and 1 800 car crash. But let me tell you how that came about. I had been practicing law for about three years, and I was happy with my practice. And one day I got a call from a counselor in La Jolla and said, Hey, Jesse, um, would you like to come over and, and do career day for us? And so I did. And I was speaking to a bunch of third graders, most of which were recent immigrants. And I asked them. I said, hey, I'm a lawyer. And somebody said, well, who, what is a lawyer? And then before I could even answer, a little boy in the back of the room said, I know what a lawyer is. And I said, what's a lawyer? He said, Brian Longcar, strong arm. When career day was over, I went back to my office. I called Channel 4, Channel 5, Univision Telemundo, and I said, listen, I'm from the Valley. I was a teacher for seven years. My last name is Gonzalez. Why is there a lawyer from Dallas named Longcar known by a student who's a third grader in La Jolla? It's TV. Get me on TV. <laughs> and my practice has benefited tremendously because of that little boy. Now, the, the bigger message there is this. I didn't go there for a TV seminar. I didn't go there because I wanted to grow my practice and become some famous local lawyer. That was not my intention. I went there because I wanted to help kids. I went there because I wanted to give back. All of you sitting here today are going to have that opportunity to give back, to do good things. And I promise you, if you're willing to do those things, you will do well and you will succeed in life and you will be rewarded. So, in closing, let me just say this. Success, as I have found out, for many of us, for many of you, may not come quickly or easily, but if you, do, if you strive to do what is right, if you work hard and dream big, Dream big. If you set an example in your own lives to be a good person in your community, great things will happen for every one of you. Congratulations on this achievement, and my God bless all of you.